Don't we serve such a good God? A faithful God? A loving God? I want to read a quick scripture for you before we are seated. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17 says, Therefore, see that you walk carefully, living life with honor, with purpose and courage, shunning those who tolerate and enable evil, not as the unwise, but as wise, sensible, intelligent, discerning people, making the very most of your time on earth, recognizing and taking advantage of each opportunity and using it with wisdom and diligence because the days are filled with evil. I know tonight we're going to hear from God and I believe God's going to speak to us. But I want to let you know before we move any forward, I want to let you know this, that tonight you're in the right place and I want you to take advantage of every moment that you're here in this room, in this house, because I believe God has a word just for you just for you. how many believe that God has a word just for you if you believe that just lift your hands to heaven father right now we receive the word that you have for us God we lay aside every distraction and obstacle every hindrance and father right now we ask you Lord to speak directly to our hearts father we know God that life comes with its it's trials, it comes with its storms and seasons, but there is not a storm or a trial that we face that is too great for you. You are still in control. You are still God. You still know exactly what we're going through and you're here to give us a word tonight. So Father, speak through me. I can't do this without you. Put me to the side and Holy Spirit, you take over. We worship you, we glorify you in Jesus' name and we all say amen and amen. Give your neighbor a high five as you're seating and let them know uh, um i like your shirt today i like your shirt let's give a hand for our worship team what an awesome team great job i remember when i was a kid by the way my name is christian for those that don't know um i've been married a year and a half now my beautiful wife is sitting over here she's looking so pretty um, I, I have the privilege of, of speaking today, but I want to give honor to Pastor Marco and Pastor Marco, if you're watching right now, we want to say thank you. We love you so much as a church. Let's get loud enough so we could, he could hear us cheering for him. We love you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. But I remember when I was a kid, um, you probably gone through this before too. We'd be driving home from, you know, going to the store or something like that. And there was only one thing on my mind. I was hungry. I wanted some food. So I'd be sitting in the back seat and, um, you know, I'd see, see the golden arches flying by, the McDonald's golden arches flying by as a kid. And all I wanted was some McNuggets. And, and I, I still love McDonald's to this day. My wife is praying. I get set free from the spirit of Big Mac. But I'm sorry. Big Mac and some 10 piece, then I'm straight. But I remember when I was a kid, we'd be sitting in the back seat and my brothers and sisters, we would be, my brothers and sisters, we'd be sitting in there and we'd be thinking, who's going to have the courage to speak up and ask mom if she can get us some food? You know, you don't just speak up and ask mom because you're going to get scolded. I don't know what I'm talking about. So one of us would muster up the courage and we'd finally say, mom, can we get some McDonald's or something? Can we get some food? And then what would mom say? We got food at the house. And this is what the food at the house would look like. She said, we got an Egg McMuffin at the house, mijo. That was my Egg McMuffin. Or, or maybe you're, uh, you know, you're, you see some cool clothes or you see, you know, all these kids have fancy clothes and you're like, mom, I want... I want cool clothes like they, they, the kids got the Louis belt and this kid had Gucci sandals. Mom, I want Gucci sandals. And what would mom say? We got Gucci sandals at the house. And this is what she would do. She'll get her chanclas and put some tape on them. You guys know what I'm talking about though, right? You get the picture. I remember I started to believe that everything we had at home was the worst. And... It, was, it didn't compare to the real deal. 
But the problem was that as long as I believed that everything at home was bad, then that bad was all I saw. And it's interesting because I wonder how many opportunities or things I missed even as a kid because I was so negatively focused on the negative, on the bad, on what we didn't have, on the lack. I wonder how many things I didn't appreciate when I was growing up as a kid that I may, uh, might appreciate today as an adult. The scary truth is this, that I think many of us think that same way spiritually in our lives. Some of us aren't, if we're not careful, we can miss out on what God is doing in this house today. Sometimes we get so fascinated about what's going on outside when God is saying it, I got something better for you in the house. And I believe, tonight, the, met, the title of the message is in the house. Someone say in the house. Could it be that God is trying to get something to you and you might be trying to look for it somewhere outside and God is saying it's in the house. Maybe you're looking for a breakthrough or you're looking for God to do some kind of miracle and you're praying for next levels or you're believing for a healing and you're going to this and that and the other and you're looking for favor. What I believe the breakthrough is in the house. I believe those miracles are right here in the house. I believe the next levels are right here in the house. I believe that your healing is found right here in the house. I believe that your favor is right here in the house. Look at somebody next to you and say, it's in the house. Now, it's not, I know it's not a glamorous message. I know that thinking of that, you, you know, you get the flashbacks like I do with my mom telling me we got a McMuffin at the house. And I'm like, oh, I get that picture in my head. But God is trying to teach us and train us and to know and understand that everything he has for you can find it right here in the house. In what house? In the house of God. The Bible says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. You know that God won't leave anything out of, of the plan that he has for you. He won't withhold it and he won't keep it from you. He has already freely given it to you. He's saying just find it. You can find it in the kingdom. You can find it in my house. The other night I was here. I was here late. The doors were closed. The sanctuary was dark. And I was just, I was pacing back and forth at the altar and I just began to pray. I just began to pray for the church. I began to pray over all the seats. I began to pray for you. And one thing I heard God tell me was, it's in the house. And I kept hearing that over and over again. It's in the house. And I began to hear just, just a voice, just begin, uh, God's voice began to speak to me. The breakthrough is in the house. The miracle is in the house. The next level is in the house. And I believe what God is trying to teach us tonight is that we don't have to go searching and we don't have to go and try and looking for other resources and other solutions. When God is saying is all you have to do is open your eyes and look because it's right here in the house. God has something for you right here. And like I said, you're in the right place tonight. And we're going to learn tonight. We're going to learn about ways we can get the most out of what God has for you in his house, in God's house. Let's go to point number one. How do we get the most out of what, uh, of what uh, how do we get the most out of God's house? Number one, be grateful for the house. Be grateful for the house. First Thessalonians 5.18, in every situation, no matter the circumstance, be thankful. Well, what if I, um, well, you don't know my situation, Christian, so let me just tell you. I'm going through something really tough right now. You're going to be thankful for that too? Yeah, let me check. In every situation, no matter the circumstance, be thankful. Well, you don't understand. Um, this person just really offended me and they hurt me pretty bad. Uh, should I be thankful for that? Well, let me check what the scripture says. In every situation, no matter the circumstance, be what? And continually give thanks to God. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. You know that God commands us to be grateful in every situation. When you don't appreciate what's in the house, all you see is the lack and you can't see the provision. It's interesting. I, I wonder how many opportunities we miss because we're not grateful for what God is placing in front of us right now. I wonder how many of us are maybe 
and this happens to me, we get so, we're so critically minded that we can point out a hundred negative things, but we have to think really hard about the one positive thing. Like right now in my life, my, my wife and I, praise God, we just had the opportunity to, to purchase our second home. Thank you, Jesus. God has been so good. But it's a humble home. And it's, and I'll just put it lightly, it's a minor step backwards from, from, from our first home. But it has major potential. But I caught myself this morning, and I've been catching myself all throughout the week, complaining more than appreciating what God has blessed me with. And I wonder if I could get to a dangerous zone and start cursing the blessing that God has for me. And I start to say things like, well, oh man, this house is this and this house don't got that. And oh, I can't believe this. And I caught myself this morning. and I said, you know what? I'm going to be thankful for every circumstance that I'm in. God, I thank you for this home. I thank you for these walls. I thank you for this roof. I thank you. We got holes in these walls, but I still thank you for these walls. I, I know this floor isn't all clean, but I thank you for these floors. This carpet needs some work, but I thank you for that carpet, God. I thank you for my situation. I thank you for my family. I thank you for my crazy uncle. I thank you for my crazy kids. I thank you, God, for whatever you've done in my life. I give you thanks for the situation I'm in right now. You know, there's probably somebody out there in the world that is praying to have the lifestyle you have right now. And we're complaining about the lifestyle God's given us. We're complaining about even our own church. We complain about the people we sit next to us. We're complaining about our city. We're complaining about the things that are happening in our country. When God is saying, why are you cursing the blessing that I'm giving you? Don't you see that I put this in your hand? Be grateful because when you're grateful, you'll see more of my power and my love and my resources flow through you. I can't focus on the negative and see the positive. See, God placed you here in this church for a reason. God has you here tonight for a reason. God has you watching online for a reason. You may have stumbled across the stream tonight, but God has you tuning in tonight for a specific reason. And we need to be thankful for what God is doing in our life. And every moment we have the opportunity to come together in church, we should be thankful that we get to come to a place full of God's power, full of God's love, full of breakthrough. We should be thankful that we go to a church that believes in the power of God, that believes that believes in healing, that believes in deliverance, that believes in breakthrough. I am thankful for where God has placed me. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Oh, but someone cut me off as I was trying to park. I'm thankful anyways. Oh, someone took my seat. I had my Bible and my notepad on, and someone took it. Well, I'm thankful anyways. I'm thankful. Oh, Pastor Marco's not here. We got to hear this other guy. I'm thankful anyways. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for every volunteer serving tonight. I'm thankful. I'm so glad you're here. You know, another way to be grateful for your house is to take ownership of your house. You know, as a kid, it was hard to, you know, I remember as a kid, I always wanted a dog or, you know, another animal or something. And I could try to convince my mom or my aunt and uncle, like, please, can we get a dog? Please, I'll take care of it. I'll pick up the poop. I'll do all of that, please. You know, that's a lie. <laughs> I'll do it day one. And then after that, it's their problem. But today, I'm like anti-animal. I mean, I love animals. Don't get me wrong. Peter, don't sue me. I love animals. But I do not want an animal in my house. How different is that from when I was a kid? Because I was a kid, I wanted the animals, I wanted this, but it wasn't really my home, it was my mom's home. The dog accidentally does an accident on the floor, that's her floor, it's not really mine. That's her problem, not mine. But now that I have a carpet, I don't want no dog on that. I don't want no spills. Uh, excuse me, can you eat in the kitchen, please? Thank you. Uh, coaster on the table, thank you. To please, I don't want no water rings. Thank you very much. Wipe your feet, thank you. Shoes off, thank you very much. This is my home. I got to protect it. I got to keep it clean. I'm taking ownership of my home. See, if we're going to be th grateful for what we have, let's take ownership of our church. 
Let's take ownership of what you see the chair you're sitting on. That's your chair. The doors you walk through, those are your doors. The foyer, the parking lot, that's your parking lot. This is your church where you bring your family and your friends and you invite your loved ones to get saved and to share in your house. This is your house. We got to be grateful for our house. Grateful for where God placed us. This is my house. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to keep this place clean. I'm going to pick up my water bottle as I leave my seat. I'm not going to just leave it on the floor. I'm going to pick it up. Well, that word was for somebody that was going to leave their water bottle, but they said, never mind. But the, but the real way we take care of this house is by taking care of the people in this house. You know, the chairs are great and the walls are great and everything in here is great. And I love the story we got tonight. That was a word. He crushed his own car. He said, that's just a material item. It's just a material thing, right? But God, he provides. But you know what's more important than just the material things? The people. You. The person sitting next to you. See, the re a, really, a real way to be grateful for this house is to take care of the people that are next to you. Take ownership of the person next to you. You know, Cain made a mistake when he said, am I my brother's keeper? He didn't take ownership of his responsibility to be there for his brother. You know, it's our responsibility to take care of one another. You know that God didn't put the responsibility on the pastor to build the church. As a matter of fact, the pastor isn't supposed to build the church. The pastor is, is supposed to equip you to build the church. The pastor's job is to let you know, this is your house. The people around you, those are your disciples. The people in this city are for you to take care of. God is giving us a responsibility to take care of the people that are right here in this room. The real way we take care of this house is by taking care of each other. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, therefore, encourage one another. And build one another up just as you are doing. We build the house by building each other. Hebrews 10, 24 says, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. That scripture is saying, not only should we just find the opportunity when it comes, scripture saying is look for ways to build up the person next to you. Think of something to do to help the person that's in front of you. Think of a way to be there for somebody when they're hurting or they're broken or maybe they lost someone in their family and they need some prayer or maybe they don't have a mentor and God has been maybe calling you to be a disciple maker or maybe maybe God is calling you to be a part of something and serve in a ministry to help somebody in need. Maybe help the kids. Right now we have a whole kids ministry taking care of the babies. Maybe God's been calling you to do that. What God is saying is think of ways consider ways look for the opportunities find them to build each other up and to love each other that's how we take care of our house the bible teaches us to look for it i want to practice that really quick look at someone next to you i know it just got awkward right now everyone's like oh who do i look at uh. And I want you just to say one encouraging thing to that person. One encouraging thing. It could be, you're going to make it. You could say, God's got a plan for you. It could be, I believe in you. God has something for you. You know what we just did right now, church? You know what we just did? We just built up the church. We reinforced the church. We, we strengthened the church. Maybe that person next to you just needed that little encouraging word and you had it within you and you, it was so easy just to get it out. It didn't cost you anything to give them an encouraging word, but it meant everything for them. Just know this, God has given you tools and resources to build this house. Just be grateful for where God has placed you and positioned you. Let's build this house together. So ways we get the most out of it, we got to be grateful for the house, number one. And number two, utilize what's in the house. Utilize what's in the house. Number two, utilize what's in the house. Look at 2 Kings 4, 2 through 6. It's a story I taught on a couple weeks ago, but I felt like God wanted us to dig a little out of this story a little more. 
This woman, she was, there's a famine in the land and she had no resources or tools. There's some creditors that were going to come and take everything she had. Because she had nothing to give, they were going to sell her sons to slavery. And so she was asking for help. And Elisha asked, what can I do to help you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, nothing at all, except a flask of olive oil. She said, nothing at all, except this. See, to maximize all that God has for you, you must begin to use what he's already given you. The woman could have ended her sentence at nothing at all. She could have stopped there, but she actually saved herself when she said, except this. I have a little flask of olive oil in this house. I mean, I have a little something, but that was all that God needed. That was a little that God needed to do a miracle in her life. Now, I don't know what you have or what you feel like you don't have here in this house. No, I've only been coming for a month. I'm only serving in this ministry here. Or uh, there's not much I do. Or there's not much I can do. There's not too many opportunities for me. Well, I'm here to let you know, don't focus on the nothing. Focus on what you do have. And know this, it's not just a little flask of olive oil. God has a lot for you here in this house. God has a lot for you in his house. God has favor for you. He has blessing for you. He has breakthrough for you. He has freedom for you. He has liberty from addiction and disease for you. He has breakthrough from your porn addiction. He has breakthrough from your drug addiction. He has breakthrough from your old lifestyle. God has more for you here in this house. In his house, he's got your favor. In his house, he's got the business idea that you've been looking for. In his house, he's got the wisdom. In his house, he has everything that you need. We got to use what he's given us in this house. Look at Luke 16, 10. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. Be faithful with what you have. For all my discipleship group leaders out there in the place, be faithful with the sheep that God has given you. For all my ministry leaders out there in the place, be faithful with the team God has entrusted you with. For all those that are volunteering and serving even tonight, be faithful with the opportunity to serve in the kingdom of God. And for all those that are coming here to church, maybe this is your first time, I believe God has something for you here in the house. God has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. He has breakthrough for you. And where you feel like you don't have any identity or sense of purpose, I believe God has that for you here in this house. How many believe that tonight? That God has a plan and a purpose for you. And number three, don't miss the opportunity in the house. Don't miss the opportunity in the house. Look at Ephesians 5, 15. It's a scripture I read earlier. Therefore, see that you walk carefully, living life with honor, purpose, and courage, shunning those who tolerate and enable evil, not as unwise, but as wise, sensible, intelligent, discerning people, making the very most of your time on earth, recognizing and taking advantage of each opportunity and using it with wisdom and diligence. We got to take advantage of the opportunities that God is giving us. You know, this is a church where there's over a hundred ministries to serve in. There are many opportunities to get plugged in. If you're a man in this church, there's an opportunity for you to go up to a mountaintop, receive a word and a download from God coming June 3rd, and you can receive breakthrough and favor that's not just going to be for you, but for your entire family. That's an opportunity. Don't let it pass you by. If you're a teenager in this house and, 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 or you have teens in this house and you're having trouble raising your teens, there's an opportunity for you as a parent to, to, be, to, ta- to tag team with the church and let your teen get radically set on fire for God because we got a youth conference coming up in June. There's opportunity for you. Don't let those opportunities pass you by. You know what the word opportunity actually means in scripture? It's this word, I can't even pronounce it, but I'm going to try. Exagorazomenoi. And you know what's crazy? None of you can correct me because you don't know how to say it either. 
opportunity. It means to redeem. You know what the worst is like when you had the best coupon, like uh, 75% off and you're like, ooh, I can't wait to use this. You show up, you're at the register like, and uh, the total is going to be 100 something. You're like, mm, actually, I got 75% off a uh, coupon here. And they're like, great. Oh, fortunately, you forgot to redeem it. Oh. Okay. You can, uh, I'll just take this. <laughs> you can keep every, put everything in your back counter and however you put things back. You know, the word opportunity actually means to redeem to make wise and sacred use of the opportunity for doing good. I had a, a very alarming dream. This was a prophetic dream that God gave me. I believe it was for me, but I, but I, also, feel, I also believe that God was giving me this dream for others, for the church. I was sitting in a train station. And in the train station, you guys know how it works. Let's just picture a train passing through this front here. People can wait at the edge on the, on the yellow mark, waiting for the train to come. There was no train yet, but everyone, there was probably 100 people stacked like the New York subway, ready to get on this train, standing in position, just like this. And I was sitting off to the side, maybe kind of over here, and I was kind of lounging. I was sitting at a table and at the, at, the, at the little coffee table, I had my notebook out. I had my Bible out. I had my laptop. I had other things and I was kind of busy. I had my foot up. Maybe I was on the phone. I was just doing a lot of work. I was, I was being a busybody. And my aunt was in the, my aunt Janet, shout out to my aunt Janet Casas. She was, she was in the dream and, and she was standing there at attention waiting to get on the train. And she looks back over at me and she says, Christian, the train's going to come soon. You should get ready. So I hear her and I, I give her the affirmative, like, you got it. But I go right back to what I was doing. You know, I got my notepad out, got my Bible out. I'm probably doing a lot of good things over here. I'm, I'm busy. And then the train pulls up. She turns back again. She said, Christian, the train's here. Let's go. So I'm like, all right, sounds good. I put all the stuff in my backpack I put everything away, I'm putting my backpack on, and I'm running over to get on. And as I'm getting on, I see the last foot step on the train, and the doors begin to close. And I remember seeing myself trying to pry open the doors, but it was too late. The train started moving. I missed the train. The dream ended. And I felt God tell me this, don't wait for the opportunities to come to get ready. Don't wait for someone to come knocking on your door to be ready. Be ready now. You know what the other crazy thing about that dream was? You know, if you go to a train station, in order to get as far as I was, you needed to buy a ticket. I mean, I probably had a ticket. I got in through the gate. I, I, I'm sure I had my, you know, I had my backpack. Obviously, I had what I needed to go on this trip. But you know what the other thing God told me was? Just because you're in proximity doesn't mean you're in position. I was in the area. I was around the people. We must have got there. I was there in time to get on the train. I was in there, but I was not in position. And sometimes maybe we're here in the house and we're coming Wednesday after Wednesday or Sunday after Sunday. And what God is saying, it's time to just go from being in the area to actually getting into a position, to actually get into a place where you can use your gift. Getting to a, pl a place where you can start walking in your purpose. See, I, I believe I'm looking at a room full of leaders and, and, and disciple makers. I believe I'm looking at a room full of servants that have gifts. I believe that I'm looking at a room full of people that have a testimony that can help somebody that was in your shoes before. And what God is saying is you've come this far. Don't stop now. Get in position because I have somewhere I want to take you. I want you to get on this train because I have a purpose for your life. I got a plan for for you I got a destiny for you I got something great for you and it's right here in this house but it's time for you to get in position so I can use you where I'm calling you so that someone's life can change and someone's life can be transformed someone say get in position 
Someone say it's in the house. Last scripture, Acts 2, 38. And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We need to immerse ourselves in the house. We need to go all in. I know that some of you have dealt with church hurt in your past. A pastor or a leader, someone has hurt you. Someone neglected you. Someone maybe wasn't there when you needed them the most. Maybe someone was only there when they needed you. I understand this happened. And I want to apologize on behalf of the church for doing that to you. But don't let that stop you from jumping back in to let God use you in a way you've never been used before. Go all in. Jump all the way in. Immerse yourself. You know the word baptize here? There's actually two translations for the word baptize, two Greek words. One of the translations for that word is baptizo, which means to be immersed or to submerge yourself. Now listen to this. The other word is bapto, which means to dip. There's a difference between jumping all the way in and from just ah, dipping your toe in the water. I'm the kind of guy, and I'm not proud of this, that if we're going to go swimming or going to the beach, it takes me like 45 minutes to get all the way in. Uh, don't judge me, Ryan, please. I'll go, oh, okay, all right, my toe's used to it. Let me get my ankle. Ah, it's cold. <laughs> Don't judge me. That's how God made me. But we accomplish nothing. If here in the house of God, we're just toe dippers. Oh, you go to the way? Yeah, I go to the way. That's my church. What do you do? Nothing. I just dip my toe. Man, how long you been going there? I've been going there for 35 years, young man. The church isn't even 18 years old yet. <laughs> toe dipper. We're not toe dippers here. We're not. God isn't saying just to bap toe. God isn't saying just dip your toe in. God is saying jump all the way in. Maybe this is the confirmation you've been needing. Maybe you've been looking for a word from God. God, do I jump all the way in? God, do I join the class? God, do I become a disciple maker? God, do I become a volunteer? God, do I do what you call me to do? God, is this my church? And we got to say, jump in, son. Jump in, daughter. Immerse yourself. Go all the way. Because the breakthrough, the healing, the provision, the life that you need, everything you're looking for, you can find it right here in this house. Someone say, it's in the house. Look at someone next to you and say, it's in the house. Your next level, you're going to find it in the house. Your breakthrough, you're going to find it in the house. Stop dipping your toe and jump all the way in. Who's ready to jump all the way in tonight? Come on, if you're ready to jump all the way in, I want you to stand to your feet and I want you to give God a little bit of praise. I want you to get excited for the next level. I want you to get excited for your provision. I want you to get excited because I believe God is a miracle that he's releasing to you tonight. How many believe that tonight? You know, to really see radical change in your life, you need to jump all the way in. For you to see God do something that's miraculous, to see God do a breakthrough, you got to jump all the way in. Don't let that train pass you by. Don't be like me in that dream. And let the train pass you by. Missing your opportunity. And tonight, before anyone else leaves, please, don't miss your opportunity tonight. 
We don't have to wait till next week. You can jump in tonight. I'm gonna make, a, I'm gonna make this first call. If you've been feeling like there's a breakthrough, there's another level for you. And maybe there's been some hesitation for you. You've been feeling God pulling you and you've just been pulling away. You've been sensing God calling you and ushering you and you've just kind of been resisting or ignoring. You know, or maybe you're discouraged tonight because God has a breakthrough for you, but you feel like you blew it. You feel like you sinned so much that God is just going to erase his plans for you and start fresh. I'm here to let you know God does not do that. God has a plan for you and it's perfect and it's complete. Tonight, if you need to jump all the way in, if you need to go all the way in and you're just no longer resisting and, and maybe getting rid of your discouragement or your shame or your fear or whatever it is that's keeping you from going to the next level, then at the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hands. I see all your hands. Just raise your hands. I see 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 your hands. We keep the lights on. There we go. Let's do this. Everyone that raised your hand, I want you to do something else. I want you to make your way forward up to these altars right now. And, and, and this altar is going to represent is going to represent you jumping all the way in to what God has for you come on let's clap it up for everyone that's coming forward right now they're so coming they're so coming here I am use me Lord I lay down my life for sin out. Here I am. Use me, use me, Lord. I lay down my life. Lord, here I am, here I am. Here I am. Use me, use me, Lord. I lay down my life. I want to make a second call. I want to make a second call. This is for the person that, you know, the Bible says that the price or the wages of our sin is death. That means that for the sin we've committed, there's a price hanging over our, our heads and that's eternal separation from God. I'll, I'll put it even more plainly. If you've sinned, your destination is hell. I know I've sinned. And I can say pretty confidently that everyone in this room has sinned. But the good thing, the good news is this, that God loves you so much that he intervened and he sent his son to die in your place to pay the price that you owed. He didn't owe it, but he paid it anyways. And he did so out of love for you so that you can be free and forgiven of your sin and receive a new start. And what does it cost you? It costs you nothing except to put your faith in Jesus and to turn away from your old life and to turn to him. Tonight, God is saying, if you want to put your faith in Jesus, if you want to be saved from your sin, if you want to get, if you want to receive Christ, Jesus as your Lord and as your savior, then tonight is that night. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. If you're not up here already, one, two, three, raise your hand. You're saying, I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and as my savior. I want to give him my everything. I don't want to hold anything back. I want to be saved. I see your hand, bro. I see your hand. Anybody else? It's not up here yet. If you raise your hand and you're not already up here, I want you to come forward and let's clap it up for our brother as he makes a decision to follow Jesus tonight. So now, let's pray. We may need a few more altar workers, quite a few more. Any discipleship group leaders or ministry leaders, please, we need your help. We need your help. If you're a discipleship leader, ministry leader, please come on up. We need your help. Okay. So now, the person that's in front of you, they're going to pray with you. They're going to help you. But not only that, they're going to help you take your next step. Your next step 
What we have here at the church is a class called Holy Warriors. We have opportunity for you to get baptized, to get discipled, to be mentored. Don't miss the opportunity. Don't miss your opportunity to jump in and to, and to take advantage of everything that God has for you tonight. The person in front of you, they're gonna pray with you, but they're also gonna help you get connected. We have, we have a, a couple right here. We need a married couple over here. Let's pray. I want, okay, we got someone over here coming up. Let's pray. Everyone bow your head and close your eyes. And we're gonna pray. We need a gentleman right here as well. We need another married couple right here and one right here. Yep. Very fine for you. Let's pray. Everyone bow your head and close your eyes. And I want you to repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask forgiveness of all my sins. Forgive me for living life. Forgive me, Lord, for holding back. You never held anything back from me. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead so I can be saved, so I can have a new start. Tonight, I'm jumping all the way in. I won't hold anything back. Take my whole life. Use me at the level that you called me. Fill me with purpose. Fill me with passion. Fill me with your spirit. I receive your wisdom your will for my life. I'll never be the same. My life belongs to you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and setting me free. In Jesus' name I pray, we all say amen and amen. How many received the word from God tonight? You say, that word is for me. We love you, church. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one that could come against you. We have an amazing service this Sunday at 9 or 11. Invite a friend. Bring somebody out. You don't want to miss it. We also got a, a young adult service. If you're a young adult, you can come join us Friday night, 7 p.m. If you're a man in the place, hop up on the app. Sign up for the men's conference. It's not too late. There's a few spots left. There's a few spots left. You, It could be for you. Sign up today. We love you, church. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. We also got free root beer floats in the foyer. If you want to hang out, hang out in the foyer. Have some fun. Get to know somebody. If you need prayer, come on up. We love to pray for you. God bless.